Tonight on Children's Hospital, three-year-old Amelia needs urgent brain surgery, but the risks are high. It took me five weeks to make the decision. It was like really high risk of having a stroke on the table. There's eye trouble for 13-year-old Sinead. Look at that stinging. And four-year-old Amy's banged her head. I banged into the metal railings at school. The brand new Royal Manchester Children's Hospital is one of the biggest hospitals of its kind in Europe. All specialist services are now under one roof, in a space equivalent to 39 football pitches. Its dedicated medical team of a thousand work round the clock transforming the lives of the children who need it most. Most children arriving at the hospital have painful symptoms, but not three-year-old Amelia Pringle Price. Sleepy. Yeah. Would you okay. like coming into hospital? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Don't you? Although she looks like any other healthy little girl, she's about to have an operation that could save her life. We need to test you. All right. Amelia was born with a rare progressive disease called Moya Moya, which affects just one in a million children. The blood vessels that supply blood to her brain are too narrow, so there's a risk she could have a life-threatening stroke at any moment. It's possible to grow out of the disease, but scans have revealed that Amelia's condition is getting worse. The risk of stroke is so high that you live on eggshells. You're scared of letting her cry because you're thinking, if I let her cry now, this could bring on a stroke. Brushing hairs. <laughs> Brushing hairs? Are you making nanny gorgeous? No. No. Oh. Amelia's not yet had a stroke. Today she's arrived with her mum and grandmother for the operation, which could mean she never will. Would it be raining? Would it be raining? How are things? Not bad. Good. Neurosurgeon Ian Kamali is one of a handful of surgeons in the country who can improve Amelia's blood supply and remove the risk of a stroke. This is an angiogram, and you can just about see here there's a, a narrowing. That narrowing is causing a reduction in blood flow. All this part of the brain here should be filling with blood vessels as well, and it's not. It is a sort of time bomb uh, waiting to go off. But the operation to improve Amelia's blood supply is also high risk. If her blood pressure suddenly drops or rises in theatre, she could have a stroke while she's under anaesthetic. There's definite risks in doing this operation, and those risks, uh, if they did happen, are potentially major and potentially life-threatening. If we tip it the wrong way uh, with the anaesthetic or with the manipulation of what we're doing during the operation, uh, then there's a risk that we could set off a stroke. Amelia's mum has had to weigh up the risks of allowing her apparently healthy daughter to have a life-threatening operation. It's a massive decision. And the risks, just what we talked about, permanent neurological damage, if there was irritation the though, yeah, and that very, very small uh, risk of not getting through. It took me five weeks to make the decision. The pros and the cons worked out exactly the same. There was like really high risk of having a stroke on the table. But then on the other side of it, I thought, I don't want her being 13 in school and being worrying about if she's getting stressed about her exams and stuff that it's going to bring on a stroke. I want her to have as normal life as she can, so I'd rather get it done and out of the way. The difficult decision has been made. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. No, I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, Amelia's family will find out if it was the right one. The hospital's accident and emergency department sees up to five children a day with eye problems. 13-year-old Sinead's just arrived with her mum. She's had very sore eyes for the past few days and they're getting worse. I've had conjunctivitis before, so I thought it was that. And then it got a bloodshot, it went all red, and then two pimples come up in my eye. You're scared, aren't you? Nervous. Nervous. She's nervous. Looking after Sinead today is Dr. Azza Malik, who's worked in children's A&E for the past three years. 
Are you getting any discharge from the eye or is it just kind of tears or water? It's like green. It's green. Coming, yeah, so greenish discharge. Okay. And how about your eyesight? How's that at the moment? Blurry. It's a bit blurry. Okay. What we're going to do is just um, put some uh, fluorescein yellow drops into your eye, switch the lights off and then just have a look with the blue light, which will show up if there's any damage to the cornea itself. That's it. Okay, and I just need to dim the lights. Open a little bit wider. Okay. The examination reveals three spots on Sinead's eye. So there's, there's a couple of discrete areas, just at the bottom of the iris there, which have just picked up the stain. There's one just up there as well at the so 11 o'clock position. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Dr. Malik thinks they might be ulcers. A certain type of infection where you can get slight ulcers in the eye around the cornea as well. Yeah. It's very uncommon for just a, a sort of a vile conjunctivitis to cause that. And I think it's probably worth you being followed up. He's going to refer Sinead to the nearby eye hospital, but in the meantime, he's giving her something for the pain. Yeah, just roll your eye around a little bit. Stinging. We've got to put an eye patch on you. It's just a very short term thing, it's not going to cause any major fashion problems, I would think. Okay? Okay, thanks very okay. much. No thanks. Specialists at the eye hospital confirm Sinead did have eye ulcers caused by a viral infection, which should get better over time. She was prescribed antibiotic drops and is receiving ongoing treatment. Back in A&E, four and a half year old Amy's just arrived after a nasty bang to her head. Tell me what's happened to your head. I tripped on a stone and I banged into the metal railings at school. Should we have a little look at this cut on your head then? Just from there. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. That is a lovely clean cut and that will be absolutely fine. I'll go and find a nice nurse to get you sorted up. The cut's not too deep, so Dr Natalie May has decided there's no need to stitch it. It was a bit of a worry, wasn't it, when it happened? Because it was there was lots of blood, wasn't there? Mm. Right, young lady. Right. We're going to clean your head up. It's down to triage nurse Gemma to treat Amy's wound. What we're going to do is just use a bit of water and some cotton wool to clean your head, but it might it drip in your eye. If you lie down, it won't go in your eye. I'm just going to get. Just get rid of this blood round here first. Oh, good girl. We're going to have to tell those railings off on Monday, aren't we? You are a superstar, Amy. Three strips of tape should be enough to bring the cup back together and help nature take its course. Uh, OK, you're all done. Good girl. The next three to five days, that's going to take to heal. Okay. And then they'll just start to fray and they can just soak off then. Amy's had no anaesthetic and she can go home within an hour. It's the morning of three-year-old Amelia's operation. She spent the last 12 hours without food or drink to prepare for surgery, which should improve the flow of blood to her brain and remove the risk of a sudden stroke. I'm just absolutely dreading it. I'm just trying not to think about it. And Should we put a clip in your frame? The way I've dealt with it, as daft as it sounds, I've thought, I've thought about the stupid things about her hair, what I'm going to do with her hair, how am I going to be, like, when I'm taking her out, and what clothes is she going to wear? Hey, gorgeous. Are you a bit shy this morning? Mm -hmm. Anaesthetist Tanya Howell will be monitoring Amelia during her seven hours in surgery. It'll be her job to make sure Amelia's blood pressure doesn't fluctuate, putting her at risk of a stroke. I'll be there all the time making sure that everything's right, everything's stable, that she's safe, she's comfortable while she's asleep even, OK? We will keep you apart as little as possible, promise. Because we appreciate um, the most important person she's going to want to see after this is you, OK? It's the not knowing, not being with her. She's just going to be there and I'm not going to be able to get to her, I'm not going to be able to check on her. It, is that right? It's just going to be horrible. We're like really, really, really close. We do everything together. I think it's just like knowing what she's going to be going through and knowing I'm not there with her, that's going to be the toughest.
It's time for Amelia's mum and grandmother to take her down to theatre. Thank you. Right, so you there for me, okay? Ooh. Fantastic. Right, gorgeous. Good, good. Blow it away for me, gorgeous. Big deep breath. Big deep breath. You're doing fantastically well there, Mum. Fantastically well. You do really well, Millie. Mm. Quick kiss, Mum. Right, we'll see you much, much okay. later today, okay? We will look after for you. Thanks, guys. Oh, sorry, darling. I'm just stressed. I hate that bit. <laughs> Amelia's condition is so rare, neurosurgeon Ian Kamali only performs this kind of brain surgery once or twice a year. He and his team are going to attempt to divert an artery on the side of Amelia's head and stitch it onto the surface of her brain. If it works, the artery will encourage increased blood flow and remove the risk of a stroke. This is the artery here. We're just uh, getting it free now to be able to sit down uh, and sew it onto the brain. It's Dr. Howell's job to carefully monitor Amelia's blood pressure, the key indicator that she may be at risk of a stroke. Her heart rate's been very stable, and again, her blood pressure's been very stable. So, uh, so far, I think she's doing very well. It's sat on edge, you're just waiting. Like, every time someone walks past the door, you're looking. Is it good news? Is it bad news? Is it Millie? You just, it's just horrible. The operation still has hours to go. It'll be into the night before the family knows if Amelia is safe. Staff at Royal Manchester Children's Hospital treat over 100,000 patients a year for a variety of childhood diseases. But consultant Phil Riley specialises in treating a disease people normally associate with adults. Joshua Millwood is just 12 years old, but already has arthritis, a painful inflammation of the joints. I get the pain in my thumb, finger, my wrist, my left leg, my neck, my back, and my mouth. Don't forget your ankles. And my ankles. I just sometimes make me cry. You all right, Joshua? How Hello, you Dr. Riley. Dr. Riley has been treating Joshua for two years. Can I, can I, can I mark your joints, Joshua? Is that all right? Yeah. He sees about 300 children a year with juvenile arthritis. People don't think that children can have arthritis. In actual fact, probably one person in every secondary school has juvenile arthritis, which is a lot more common than most people think. Whereas this knee... Children with this condition have good days and bad days. At the moment, it's Joshua's knee that's playing up. this knee? Is that painful for you? OK, all right. Okay. His number one love is dancing, but his knee's now so painful he's struggling to keep up. It's really upsetting because I really like dancing. It sometimes almost collapses on me, so I've got to stop uh, my dancing, but I sometimes get back up and try it again. It's extremely painful. It's a really painful condition. You know, to have joint pain in any joint is extremely debilitating. You don't realise how much you use your joints, and it affects everything that you do. Today, Dr. Riley will give Joshua a treatment that should ease the pain in his knee for at least six months and prevent long-term damage to his joints. So, can you relax your hand? It's a painful procedure, so he's been given a general anaesthetic. 80 milligrams on his knee, so only two of those files. Dr. Riley's about to inject Joshua's knee with a powerful steroid to suppress his immune system. What's happened with Joshua is that his immune system, for some reason, has gone overactive, so it's attacking his joints. So what we need to do is we need to suppress his immune system so that it's not attacking his joints, but he's still got enough of an immune system to fight all the coughs and colds and the bugs. Just flex it up a little bit and turn it around a little bit towards me, so it's straight up. But the knee is so inflamed, the team must first get rid of fluid that's built up in the area. So that's the inflammatory fluid. Really, the knee should absorb this fluid, but it's because of the inflammation, it's, it's making too much. So if I get this steroid in now, and that should decrease the inflammation. Okay, and that's the knee done. 
Joshua will return in two weeks' time so Dr. Riley can monitor his progress. The hope is that the steroid injection, along with the course of drugs, will get him walking pain-free again. In Theatre 28, Surgeon Ian Kamali is halfway through an eight-hour operation on three-year-old Amelia Pringle Price. Amelia has a rare condition called Moya Moya that means not enough blood is getting to her brain. She lives every day with the risk of having a sudden stroke and suffering brain damage. A blood vessel is being diverted from the side of Amelia's head and stitched onto her brain. It should improve blood supply, but the procedure itself could cause brain damage. There are certainly risks in doing uh, uh, this kind of surgery. The biggest risk for her is uh, of having some sort of stroke uh, as part of this operation. Uh, the absolute critical thing is uh, uh, an excellent anaesthetist, and that's uh, by far the most important thing to maintain a good pl blood pressure during the procedure. Upstairs, Amelia's mum and grandmother are waiting. It's just horrible not being with her. I think the minute she's back with us, it's as soon as we can so see much easier to deal with, isn't it? Yeah, because I've been with her from being born. I cut a cord. It's just, you, it, she's like, she's like having another daughter. After seven and a half hours, Amelia's operation is nearly over. So this is a little disc of bone that we're going to hold back in place with a little titanium rivet. So obviously you need to make sure that uh, the bone isn't pinching the artery as it uh, goes in. So that's the wound closed over the top, uh, which is just a little stitch running under the skin that will dissolve away. Hi there. Well, that went fine, very well on both sides. Um, managed to do exactly as planned of uh, getting them sewn down onto the brain. Uh, she is just about to start uh, waking up now, so that's an important time uh, to see if there have been any problems, any irritation to her brain. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye now. It will take at least six months to see if the surgery has improved the blood flow to Amelia's brain but only a few hours before the team knows for sure that she's avoided a stroke during surgery. At just 12 years old, Joshua Millwood suffers from juvenile arthritis. Two weeks ago, his doctor, Phil Riley, gave him a steroid injection to ease the pain and stiffness in his knee. He's now hoping to see Joshua up on his feet again and walking pain-free. Hopefully today, as a result of the joint injection, we'll see that the warmth and the swelling in his knee will have gone down. OK, Joshua. Now, it'd be really good if I could get, get a look at your knees now. So if you could take your shoes and socks off. The worst-case scenario is, is that there's no improvement whatsoever uh, and, he, and he still has the pain and he still has the early morning uh, joint stiffness. OK. Yeah. So let's have a look at both knees. So do you want to lie yourself down completely, Joshua? Yeah. Bend your knees for me. Okay, it's been Is that okay? Yeah. Do so your knees not sore? No. Not sore at all? Okay. okay. So that's great. So the swelling has gone down a lot in Josh's knee. The actual amount of flu has gone down and the pain and the stiffness has obviously improved in that knee. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, can you see yourself up for us, Josh? So would you say it's improved a little bit or a lot since the injection? A lot. A lot, all right. Are you back doing the kind of things you want to, to be doing? Yeah. So what have you been doing in the last two or three weeks? Been doing my dancing, my singing. The drama and the cadets. Brilliant, so like that. Okay, right, be hands like that, behind you. Joshua will take a course of drugs to help prevent further flare-ups. Okay, bend down and touch your toes. But for now, with his knee pain-free and mobile, he can get back to doing all the things he loves. Brilliant. Feel strong. It's just really not painful anymore. In the recovery ward next to theatre, Amelia Pringle Price is coming round after a seven and a half hour operation on her brain. Now's the moment that should confirm that Amelia's not suffered a stroke during surgery. Amelia! Hello, Amelia! Are you 
we're just waking up sunshine. All finished. Oh, and that's superb that she's alert, she's comfortable because she's not crying, she's talking to us so uh, at the end of a long day that really makes the day. <laughs> are you sore, Amelia? Amelia's in discomfort but all the signs are that she survived the operation without any damage to her brain. And after six days recovering, Amelia is almost back to her normal self. Once I caught a fish and I sing. This is what she's done for three days, just sat singing. It's just been amazing. The rate she's come round at, you couldn't have wished for it to go any better. She keeps asking, like, when am I having my operation? She doesn't even understand that it's done, dusted, and that's it. She's done it. The family's decision to have the surgery to remove the threat of a stroke seems to have been the right one. I don't think until you, you've you made the decision, you actually go through the operation, you come out the other side and you think, yeah, that really was the right decision. If it's going to stop her having a stroke, then it's got to have been worth it. Something we've definitely done the right thing. You got your that, Millie. It'll take a year for the diverted artery to improve the blood supply to her brain but Amelia and her family can already look forward to a future without fear. Um. You can see it much more clearly on here. There's an angulation here. And because children's bones are quite soft compared with adults, they tend to get this sort of fracture rather than snapping cleanly through. The bones often buckle or bend. Hey, did they tell you the news? That your wrist is broken. Yay! <laughs> is that good news? Yeah. <laughs> the bones are bent out of place a little bit, but I think they should heal Whoa. up okay. What we need to do is put you in plaster. Can I have some, like, hot pink? Um, not today. We're just going to put a white one on. 